Today we want to talk about a very special azalea. What's unique about this is this particular variety was discovered right here in Lakeland, Florida back in 1955 at the original Peterson's Nursery location. Mr. Peterson was walking around his nursery looking at all the beautiful azalea varieties and he came across a, a wonderful uh, idea of nature. And what he was looking at, he was looking at this beautiful salmon color called Duke Jerome. And what he noticed was is that it had sported and turned into a beautiful apple blossom color. This led to a, a great deal of excitement in the industry because now we, ha we had a different uh, flower to be able to have uh, in a medium sized grower. And this, is, this was named because Dick Pope at Cypress Gardens found out about it and he asked Mr. Peterson if they could not name it after Cypress Gardens. And upon thinking about it, they did and it's now called Duchess of Cypress. It's a medium grower. It likes uh, a full sun to semi shade. Uh, it grows about three to four feet, has this tight foliage to it. The beautiful thing about it is it does bloom in the early spring, but it, but it has a few sporadic blooms in the summer and in the fall. So it's something that you can enjoy color almost year round. The, it, it's a, a misnomer of being a medium grower because it has very small leaves and most of the dwarf ones that grow lo lower than this have large leaves. So this is what we call asexual production. This is something that happened as a freak of nature, and it's called a sport. The original plant was the, Dutch, was the Duke Jerome, which is a salmon, sported this one. Around 1960, David Stabler Sr. in Winter Haven, he was out in his nursery, and he found a white flower, and it was named White Duke. Sometime after that, uh, we don't know who discovered it, but a red version uh, appeared, and it's called Red Duke. This is one of the many varieties of azaleas that we can grow here. Uh, they don't freeze, they don't have a lot of uh, bug problems, and they don't require a lot of water. Uh, fertilizer uh, requirements are, are very simple. There's an azalea camellia fertilizer right here that you use uh, several times a year. Uh, there's also a product called from Mere Acid uh, that has a, 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 a acid-based fertilizer and it's applied uh, as a liquid fertilizer, which is great. It helps maintain the, the balance of nutrients that the plant needs. Uh, when you plant them, adding a little bit of potting soil is, is a great idea to keep them uh, going for a long time. They're fairly shallow rooted, so uh, they do like a, a little bit of layer of mulch. Uh, oak leaves are probably one of the best mulches to use when you have an azalea garden. A little bit of compost added to the bed every year. Um, going to space them about three to four feet apart, and we make sure that they give them uh, plenty of room to grow. And other than that, you're going to really enjoy them. They're not really what I call the water sucking sponges that, that people have made them out to be, uh, and, and they don't necessarily have to be in a, a oasis planting because they, they, they have about the same water requirements as everything else. Some of the dwarf ones uh, require a little more water and maybe that's where some of the, the uh, mistake is about how much water azaleas need. But for a, an evergreen type plant with multitude of blooms, something very easy to take care of. What you do is after the, after the uh, plant flowers, we're going to go ahead and just kind of nip some of these uh, what are called leaders to keep the plant in, in, a, in a, a, a balance. Uh, but other than that, not a whole lot of care. I'd like you to know about this azalea, know about its history, because it, it, was, it, it appeared right here in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, it, was a, it was a plant that attracted Dick Pope uh, from Cypress Gardens to, to Lakeland to, to uh, uh, get it and then actually have it named as, as, part, of the, uh, as part of the lore of the gardens.